Uh, thanks for hanging in. Are you forgetful? Do you tend to forget your access codes, PIN numbers, user names, mobile phones? Do you tend to underperform in examinations and tests? You want to be better than your peers by outperforming them? You want to be awake when you have to? You want to fall asleep instantly when you need it? Forget the things that you want to forget? Well, I'm Stefan Rosal, and I'm a neurosurgeon, and we may have the perfect solution for you. The HippoChip is a brain implant that is, has a modular structure. It actually connects right to your nervous system. It only takes two hours to fix it, and it has no risks and negligible side effects. And for TEDx today, we have a special offer. So the first 10 of you to raise their hands get a free trial period. So who wants the HIPAA chip right now? I can see some approval there. Well, job done. Well, let's go to the clinic. We go right now. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that wasn't the real offer, right? And um, of course, I tried to trick you by telling you it's without risks and it has no side effects, and you've seen right through that lie. On the other hand, I am a neurosurgeon, and we neurosurgeons do implant electrodes in brains. And tonight I want to talk you through the history of this and what we can do with it, and make you think about what the consequences of this technology might be in the future. Oops. Even we simple-minded surgeons know that the brain is a very delicate organ that sits inside our heads, and it actually controls every action, every emotion, every thought, at every millisecond of our lives. And by interfering with that apparatus on a larger scale, we might not, even only, we might not only change psyche and minds, but we might actually change society as a whole. But Let's start with the beginning. And the beginning, as in many human beginnings, is curiosity. Now, 80% of human beings are curious. Well, in here, it's probably about 100%, right? And people have long wondered, since the brain is working on electricity, what an electrode connected to the brain would do. Now, fortunately, also, 80% of human beings are rather cautious. So scientists have started to implant these electrodes in animals first. Rats are the favorite animal of neuroscientists for a long time. And rats are trained to carry out specific tasks by rewarding them with food. Now, in a famous experiment in the 1950s, scientists implanted rats at a very delicate side of the brain that we call the reward center. And um, of course, if you send a, a signal or send electricity in through that reward center, the rat would feel extreme pleasure. Now, rats also take a lot of pleasure from eating. In that way, they don't differ much from us humans. And given the choice, of pulling a lever for that electrical signal and another lever for food, rats actually choose the electricity. And then there was another famous experiment that involves a um, rather theatric Spanish-born scientist in Yale by the name of Jose Delgado. Uh, Delgado actually implanted a bull a fighting bull with an electrode in the caudate nucleus that is a center that is involved in um, intention, emotional control. And um, he developed a remote control that he called a stimulusiver because it could receive signals from the bull's brain and it could also send electricity in the bull's brain. And in, um, the, the, the most famous action of the stimulusiver occurred in 1965 at a, a bull breeding range in 
Cordoba. So Delgado went into, and went into that bull breeding range with the bull, with that red cloth here. And then when the bull charged, he pressed the button of the remote control and stopped the bull right there. This is, oops, should be up there actually, yeah. Um, Delgado claimed that by pressing this remote control, he took away the bull's aggressive behavior. He actually believed that by physically controlling our minds, we could stop criminal behavior. So if we do that, if we physically control our minds, we would be on our way to a psycho-socialized or um, socialized society, psycho-stimulated society. So um, before telling you what we now do with electrodes in the brain, 56 years after that famous experiment, we should ask ourselves two simple questions. If we stick an electrode into the brain, what happens to the electrode and what happens to the brain? Of course, for the brain, we are creating a wound, sometimes even a bleeding wound. And the brain itself reacts by wrapping the electrode with a layer of tissue. And since it cannot eject the electrode, it tends to make this, it makes sure that this layer gets rather thick, which us neurosurgeons, of course, makes unhappy because then we have to put more charge into the electrode and the battery of the electrode or of the implant will unload faster and we have to recharge it more often like your mobile uh, phone batteries. So why do we do that anyway? Why, why do we stick electrodes into brains anyway? Because we know we can help patients. For instance, if you have a patient with a severe um, spinal cord injury who cannot move her, his or her hands anymore, she or he can still create the signals that have been moving or that move hands and feet. So we can pick up the signals, amplify them and use them for the person to write messages or even to control a wheelchair or to activate an artificial limb, or even to revitalize the, the natural limb. But we call those externalizing implants. The, the opposite is internalizing implants when we, put, uh, when we give electricity into the brain. And the most famous example of that is Parkinson's. You probably all know that Parkinson's is a disease that comes with severe shakes or tremor. And um, you can actually alleviate that when you put an electrode in the brain. And since we have no patient here today, I want to demonstrate that for you. So I will act as a patient for a minute. Um, severe shakes, right? Not good for neurosurgery. So if I want to drink something, I cannot even bring that glass to my mouth. It's very hard. Now I'm showing you when I when I turn on the electrode, you will hear the buzzer, right? And now it's very simple for the patient to bring that back, the glass. So you can actually do very much good with these electrodes. There's another famous example that's called OCD. You're probably familiar with that too. It's obsessive compulsive disease, like when a person has permanently to wash her or his hands, or uh, is constantly checking if the door is locked or the stove is turned off. I see some people here nodding, so you might notice the same features in yourself. So if you put an electrode in there, or even other people keep repeating phrases like, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, I cannot do this. And if you activate the electrode, then they are perfectly normal again. So yeah, it's kind of amazing how we can change brain wipes by putting electrodes into brains. 
And since it's so striking, many of you would probably, are probably afraid about this. And those of you who, have, who did not want to have the hippo chip in the first place are probably the most afraid. Well, as long as we are talking about patients curing diseases, as long as the benefits by far outweigh the risks, as long as your insurance company pay for it, as long as the patient has a say if she or he wants the implant or not, you're probably on the safe side and few people would question that. But what if we take this to the next level? What if we implant healthy people to become better humans? To be able to focus right on time, not to be distracted, suppress their fears, suppress pain, outperform us in most competitive situations. Wouldn't we feel pressure to, to have that implant ourselves? Wouldn't we want to become cyborgs to be able to compete again? What if cyborgs compete with us for jobs? or even for the love of our partners and friends. The reason those thoughts come up again in public is advances in technology. You probably heard about uh, Elon Musk's company Neuralink. And Neuralink actually managed to create much tinier electrodes for the brain and they also created a robot that can implant those electrodes pretty safely because the robot is connected to a microscope. And as you can see here, it avoids blood vessels, very small, very tiny blood vessels, which we aren't even able as neurosurgeons to avoid. So it's much more perfect now. And then there is another company that created an electrode that can be flushed through your vessels, through the veins, into the brain, so you don't even need a craniotomy anymore. And these advances in technology send people dreaming again. And people dream about streaming music directly into the brain, or operating PlayStations by thought alone. And it might actually help to have a mind matrix to decide for yourself if you want to become a cyborg in the future to uphold with your responsibilities, or if we should put the brakes on neuro enhancement after all. So if we, if we think about neuro enhancement, we have to dig a little deeper. We have to use our own computers, our precious brains. But sometimes we also have to use common sense. If you still have intact hearing, why would you want to stream, electro, uh, stream music right into your brain? You can still hear music, right? You have perfect headphones now, but probably the easier way. Or why would you want to work your PlayStation when you can still use your hands, or you can, why you want to work it with neural signals that are feeble and very hard to control? Also, we should probably remember Mies van der Rohe's motto, less is more. So if you have a perfect brain-computer interface that you can bring into a cap or stick onto the skin of, the, the skin of your head, and not implant electrodes, you would probably choose a less invasive method. So if we still want to interfere with psyche and play piano on our psyche by sticking electrodes into multiple sensitive parts of our brain, we would have to dig a little deeper. We would probably want to make up our minds and we would you cannot let us neurosurgeons decide for that. So that's why we need you. That's why we need your input. That's why we need an open public debate. 
I hope I didn't disturb too much positive brain wipes here by talking too much science. And I thank you very much for letting me implant a tiny thought idea into your brains. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, TEDx WHL team, for doing a fantastic job tonight. Thank you. Thank you.